Welcome, everyone, to another episode of What You Doing. I'm Aaron Burrell, alongside my co-host, Paul Garino. What's up, guys? We are joined by a very special guest today. Please go ahead and introduce yourself to the people. What's up, guys? I'm Brian Fitzsimmons. Uh, now I work at Barcel Sports. Excited right. to be here. Yeah, for sure. Could you just take us back? Like, So when did you uh, graduate, and uh, what did you graduate with? Yeah, so I graduated Sacred Heart uh, in 2008. I uh, graduated with a degree in media studies. Uh, during my time here, I always wanted to be in media. I knew that right from the get-go. So I declared my major early on as a freshman. Uh, and I spent my time here, you know, I, I, I think wisely. I want to be very aggressive in taking advantage of, of all the opportunities that are here to help students prepare themselves for their career. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I leaned into being part of the athletic communications department, took as many different courses as I could, uh, worked my way up uh, to being the editor of the paper here. Um, so yeah, I was very much in the content creation and, and uh, um, you know, re reporting realm uh, here. And then uh, after I graduated, I got a job um, as a reporter uh, for a wire service and then got a job as a managing editor for MSG. Oh. And so that, that, you know, the early years of my career being in content creation and reporting, mm -hmm. you know, I attribute all of that to my time here. Yeah, that's awesome. And what about like, uh, since no, I don't want to age you, but what is what is the kid? How, 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 don't worry, we're, we're, we're all old too. Old, I've yes. been called I've been called old. I think five times already. Or I've been here like an hour. Here, I got, it's like, all right, I I get it. I got this good one for you. Uh, one of my friends, uh, his uh kid goes to me. He goes, uh, he's like, Yo, Paul, you're so old. You saw LeBron get drafted. I was like, what? Oh, I was boy. like, he's got a point. Yeah, I know. I was like, well, I'm not. I was like, I'm not that old, but all right, cool, whatever. Yeah, I guess you're right. But you know what's bad is when you're LeBron's age. Like I <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like coming back now. I know this is your second year coming back for the the uh, the alumni pr program. Um, so tell us, like, what does the campus look like to you from '08 to now? Uh, it's you can't compare. It. Yeah. It's just, yeah. it's apples and oranges like th this place is unrecognizable yeah. i mean wh when i was here and i was just joking about this with jim castanway you know when i was a student here we just had that small little building yeah. yes the, yeah. the you know we didn't have studios we yeah. didn't have this you know type of equipment we didn't have podcast studios right. video yeah. studios uh the kind of editing equipment sound equipment uh, we just we had a room we had a curtain that was separating it from <laughs> yeah. so, i don't know what and uh yeah, it, the the resources just weren't there, but mm -hmm. it was it was a program filled with people who were hungry mm -hmm. and wanted to learn, and that's why it worked then. Mm -hmm. Now, fast forward fifteen years later, mm -hmm. you're getting that same type of hunger from the the student body, mm -hmm. but now they're finally given resources to to advance their education. Yeah. So when you take a look at the difference between when I was here mm -hmm. and now, it, it's clearly the the resources that that are, are given to the students, and because of it it's become one of the most premier media programs in the country. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. That's why it's, it's crazy. Like we, we saw the transition. Like, so we were right there when we were moving from the old campus to the new campus. So yeah, it, like I can't even imagine you now, you're probably just like, this is like insane. Like it's, it is insane. And then yeah. I don't know if you've seen the new buildings too, like the, the, uh, the new freshman dorms are like, it looks like Hogwarts over there. It, are those dorms? <laughs> yeah. Those are, yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. like I said this to someone, like that that building, is, it's literally breathtaking. Yeah. Like yeah. You, you now walk through this campus, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it just, and it's for crazy. someone like me who graduated, you know, 15 years ago now, it's, you know, it's hard not to just like beam with pride. It's like, yeah. wow, like the, I came from here, yeah. you know, and like that, this is, this is my second home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, it's, I say this constantly. It's like, I, I feel as a, a, an alumnus here that my degree keeps appreciating yes. because of the hard work yes. that are, that people are doing here now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's funny when yep. we were here and, and all the construction was going on, we were like, we also just tell people like, people aren't going to believe that. Like we went here yeah. because like, yeah. I don't know if I'd be smart enough to get in now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I might have an issue. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would, I, I, yeah totally. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So uh, you make the transition from reporter. Let's, let's yeah. we'll get back to you into your career. So you make the yep. transition from reporter into your current role. Uh, what is, what does that transition look like? Yeah. How, so, how so after I left uh, MSG mm -hmm. as a reporter and managing editor, I, uh, got a job at AOL. And it was at a time when AOL was trying to transform its core business from being its old legacy, uh, legacy strategy of being a portal. Uh, they were trying to turn themselves into a content creation company uh, on the heels of, of being purchased by Verizon. Um, so it was my job to uh, handle the sports programming. So I was in charge of the strategy there, um, content creation there, um, 
and uh, you know, trying to create a differentiated offering that people would uh, want to go to AOL to to read, right? Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I was exposed more and more to the business development side and the product side. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I found over time was those things in trying to build uh, through, through, through those channels mm -hmm. scratched my itch even more so than content creation did. Right. So it then just transformed into like one day I woke up, I was like, you know what? Like, I think my career goals have just completely changed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it was, uh, it's an interesting story about how it's okay to evolve. You know, I, I think that when I was 18 years old and I said, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be a reporter. Yeah. I think I was a little naive to think that with all the things I'd be exposed to in, into uh, into how broad the media industry is, mm -hmm. that my interests wouldn't have changed. So, and that happened. So I found that my interests changed and me wanting to lean into learning new realms of digital business, mm -hmm. um, you know, that was something that, that really interested me and I leaned into it. Um, so then I found myself in more roles that are more skewed on the operational and the business development side, which is what I do at Barcelona Sports now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy because we just touched on it at our, our previous podcast and there we were just talking about change and uh, evolving and things like that and not being, I guess, uh, not afraid to do it. But like, I think some people think they only could do that one thing that they got their degree. And then even go to your point, you have your uh, communications degree, but now you're in the business role. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's very interesting how it all unfolded. You know, like I, I, I said this in an earlier interview, you know, someone asked me, could you have guessed that you'd be where you are today in the role you're in? And I said, no, no way, because I, this wasn't even on my radar of mm -hmm. being interested on of the business side. You yeah. know, I was always focused more on the creative side. Um, but yeah, it, it's been a, a, a thrilling ride. Uh, I love where I've ended up. You know, I find that I'm more in love with the roles that that I've had in the business development realm, the operational realm, more so than in the past roles I've had. Um, so, you know, I, I you know still have big goals, and but they're all skewed in, in a totally different way than I thought when I was younger. And yeah. um, I think there's a good life lesson in that about you know leaning into new things, and if something is interesting to you. Uh, there's a reason why, and you should lean into that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, even yeah. in, in like in my own career, I started in sports. I worked at NBC Sports, and then I now work in uh, news, and I work at Forest Television. Uh, so sure. I do like true crime. I'm more in the true crime space now. Completely. Yeah, if you'd asked so me cool. five years yeah. ago if I would have done that, I would have been like, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's just like my, as you said, you evolve, and you and your yep. dreams and your goals change. What was that moment when you realized, you know, it's not. I'm ready to. I'm ready for something new, and it clicked for you that you know business development was that new thing that you were ready to move into? Yeah, I, I think it was, I mean, it was a gradual thing. It wasn't like I, I woke up one morning and, and uh, mm -hmm. I would say that when, when I decided that content creation was no longer going to be part of my long-term goals, mm -hmm. that happened when I started to feel like um, a, a bit stag stagnant in, in where I was trending. And, and I, I realized, I was like, I haven't really learned anything new in like over a year. And this is when I was 26, I want to say. And uh, that's such a scary thing to say at yeah. that age, a any age, really, but yeah. at that age, especially. Um, and that scared me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm someone now I'm addicted to learning. I it's a, it's it's a drug that 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 you can't get off of the the the, the thought of leaning into challenges, um, trying things that scare you, uh, wanting to learn new skill sets like I've learned to be very comfortable with being extremely uncomfortable <laughs> and uh, that's worked to my advantage in a lot of areas. Yeah. So like I figured out that if I keep learning new things and new skill sets, I love that feeling and I'm becoming more valuable to my company. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just continued. And it's just that mindset has helped me, you know, propel myself through, through the, you know, the career path I'm on now. I smile when you say get comfortable being uncomfortable because yes. one of the best pieces yeah. of advice I received was I was interviewing uh, a, a player in the NFL and at the time he was on the Eagles and he was we were just talking about how he was growing as a person and he was like I've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable yeah and ever yeah. since it has been just something that I constantly remind myself because I think about the times that I've grown the most in my career totally and it was always when I was the most uncomfortable totally you know what I found too is that it's amazing no matter what industry and it doesn't even have to be media um, how 
how prone people are to wanting to help you. Mm -hmm. I, when I was at an early age, I felt like if I asked too many questions, it, I would be looked upon as like, you know, that guy doesn't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Or like, if I were to then press for asking more questions, they'd, they'd be like, what's wrong with this guy? How does he not get it? Yeah. Like I was afraid to ask questions. Yeah. Now I, I don't do that at all. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm almost to the point where, if I'm not annoying with asking questions, yeah. I'm not understanding it as best I can. So mm -hmm. like when I'm at work and I'm learning something new or I don't get something, I make sure to say it mm -hmm. because I feel like a lot of young kids today, if they have a question about something and they get an explanation, but they still don't get it, they'll mask it by saying like, oh, okay, I get it now. And then they really <laughs> don't. Yeah. yeah, It's so important for kids to lean in to being uncomfortable and still not understanding. It's yeah. okay to say, I'm sorry, I still don't get it. Can you explain it again? Yeah. Because that's where true education and growth happens. Absolutely. So I think the sooner that young kids learn that, yeah. the sooner they're going to be able to acquire new skills and, to your point, become more comfortable being uncomfortable. Dropping gems yeah. left and right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. And then just going back to your roles at Barcelona, like, could you tell us like the progression you made from there, like your the start job you had, and then I know you, I think you got, like three, you got like three or four promotions. Yeah, yeah. So I started there uh, a little over five years ago. Uh, I was brought on to manage uh, uh, a subscription service. So when they got their initial investment from the training group uh, back in 2016, a big uh, initiative that that they had had wanted to push was get into the subscription game. That that was a hot topic around the industry. You know, it was at the time of the Rise of the Athletic, uh, so on and so forth. So we got into the subscription game. We rolled out a platform for that where we had exclusive content, exclusive perks, mm -hmm. and it was my job to manage that little sector uh, of our business. Gotcha. Uh, from there, about six months later, um, we got that off the ground. You know, it was, it was uh, successful at the time. Uh, and then I was promoted uh, to oversee our, our programming as a whole. So we, we had never had a, a proper person uh, or a proper role, rather, a dedicated role to look after all the content we have going on and kind of being like an air traffic controller. So I stepped into that role. Um, and then from there, uh, I, I was uh, transitioned even more so in, in the business development realm where I was responsible for our product operations. So at Barcel Sports, our licensing business is massive, right? Mm -hmm. Barstool has so many things going on in their business that uh, they needed someone to kind of be a project manager for keeping the train on the tracks for all of those business units. So, you know, I, I really cut my teeth in that role uh, for a number of years, uh, learned from the most brilliant operators in any industry. And I think that was really the role where I learned and started to learn how to properly run a good business. Um, and then my most recent role over the summer, I was promoted to GM. So uh, I'm serving as a G GM at Barstool, uh, helping oversee a lot of our business development initiatives and uh, a lot of our, our licensing portfolio. So it's been uh, a, a wild ride of um, learning, um, a lot of needing to wear a lot of hats, um, but also uh, I feel a lot of gratitude for the people that are so much smarter than me in every room, you know, taking the time to help me and wanting to help me grow. Um, and it's just, it's just been an awesome, awesome launching pad for me. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, I love the people I work with. Uh, okay. First of all, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank yeah. You. How has how the, uh, the first six months been in your new role? Like, how has that transition been for you? It's been hectic. Uh, it's been hectic. A, a lot of a lot of learning. You know, like one of the biggest things for me w with with this new responsibility was uh, for the first time building a profit and loss sheet. So like very much being in tune with the finance team, mm -hmm. and you know making sure that from a very high level, you know the money coming in is more so than the money going out. Right? <laughs> yeah. So you know, and there's a lot that goes into it. And what's funny is that. When you look at a, a PL sheet for for you know a branch of a digital company, you know it's pretty intimidating. You know there's a lot of line items, and what, one of the great things that um, that I learned uh, as I was learning how to do that and and how to manage the things of that magnitude was uh, a leader there said to me, "Think of it like your own personal finances. You have the money that you earn every month. You have your monthly bills. You got to pay your car bill." You got to pay your insurance. You got to pay your kids' tuition. You got to pay your mortgage. It's the same exact thing, mm -hmm. and that really clicked for me. And that helped me kind of compartmentalize how I think about 
properly running sector sectors of our business and that's kind of helped simplify it you know it for me so yeah a lot of a lot of uh a lot of learning a lot of um stretching myself but i i've found that i'm from from a, a knowledge standpoint i'm a different person than when i was it, it memorial day let's call it in may yeah, so and yeah. i feel like i always hold myself to that like in six months increments if you can say you're a different person than you were for like six months ago that's how you know you're on the right track mm -hmm. and i feel like i've kind of checked that box you know for this time and and that's why um you know i'm proud of that and i'm happy that's amazing uh, yeah you talked about a bit about wearing a lot of hats and i think that yep. that's something that a lot of people uh as you're growing as you're growing in your career you're, yep. you're tasked with a lot of different responsibilities yep how do you navigate that? How do you manage your communication across? You know, I'm, I'm sure you deal with a lot of, you mentioned finance team, different teams. Yeah. There's a lot of communication that has to go into that. What advice would you give for somebody who's in a role where they are, you know, wearing a lot of hats as well? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, my role, I would say the biggest component of my role or, or why my role is unique is that I'm one of the few people in the company that has to communicate with every single department there mm -hmm. you know I, I there are a lot of focus roles and there are a lot of general general roles where people will have to talk to you know two or three departments mm -hmm. you know i have to be able to speak to all of them mm -hmm. so yes be, me being able to learn the language of, of every department and, and figuring out how can i bring value to, to this team and this person in this department that's kind of helped me um you know i i kind of do a, like a weekly check-in with myself uh, and i say to myself who needs me the most on my A game? And I think of all the people that I have to serve and, and I make sure that I prioritize my time according to that. So, you know, being able to juggle a lot of balls in the air, having to deal with a lot of departments, it's a lot, but you know, with organization and keeping the mindset of how can I provide value, that service leadership type uh, mindset has helped me. Wow, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I kind of, kind of basic question, but like, what's your day to day look like at Barstool? It's all over the place yeah. because because when you look at our licensing portfolio, we have uh, a D two C coffee company, we have a virtual dining business dealing with cheesesteaks. Yeah, <laughs> uh, we have uh, Pink Whitney vodka. Yeah, um, you know, we have various other businesses that that we look after or are trying to grow. We have a massive commerce business, and then you know, even though my role is very much skewed on the business side. I still get roped into a lot of pl uh, strategic planning tied to our content. Like what does our Super Bowl plan look like and how do we package that for the sales team to go sell? Yeah. And how do we take all the things in our ecosystem and create value for, for a client? So I get roped into a lot of that. Um, so yeah, it's like I deal with so many different unrelated things that yeah. Me trying to break down a, a, a daily schedule for you is like impossible, but <laughs> I, I would you. say that it all has to deal with uh, keeping the train on the tracks. Yeah. How are, how are we growing? Um, you know, is our business healthy and then constantly planning ahead? This is yeah. Uh, okay, oh yeah. No, I was going to say too, going back to the sacred heart. Now uh, you're getting an award. So what does that, what does that mean to you to come back and uh, receive the award? And now you're going to be up on the board over there. Yeah, I, I told I told Andrew you got to take Dario down. It. Take a video, of, take him down, send to Dario. That'll set him off. Uh, He'll be on the first flight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it uh, the award is is awesome. You know, it's it it means a lot. It, it's you know it's humbling. It's um, you know, it makes me nostalgic. You know, I remember when I first walked on this campus, and you know, I knew what I wanted to do with my life. I wanted to go in media, and I said to myself like. I'm going to make the most of my time here and make that happen for myself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did that. I worked hard and, you know, I got into the, you know, the, the realm that I want to be in. And it's because of this place, like the success that I've had, you know, the success that you guys have had, you know, others within these four walls, outside these four walls, it doesn't happen without the commitment from the faculty and from the, the administration to, give everyone the resources to, to make their dreams come true. So yeah, I'm just filled with a ton of gratitude. It's, it's really awesome to come back. Um, you know, and, and my hope is that, uh, you know, years down the road there there's, you know, people continuously get better and better and better and better. Um, so that this program continues to grow. And, you know, in my mind, we're so close to being the best, uh, media program in, in the country. 
I agree. And I, I mean, you talked about the hunger everyone has. I mean, Paul and I, when we were in school, we were both like, I mean, even post grad, we were just like hungry for opportunities. We were we weren't going to wait yep. around for an opportunity to come around. We just went out and we started shooting our own content. We started putting it up. We were we weren't waiting for opportunities, and that that's that hunger I think that a lot of students here have. Totally. Um, and yep. but we're we're almost done with this, so I wanted to we wanted to wrap it up with a couple fun questions. Sure. Uh, PG, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and let you kick this one off. Oh well, this is a little curveball, but okay. <clears throat> we're not going to talk about aliens yet. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so obviously you work at Barstool, so yeah. you got. I'm from Connecticut. Yep. So we got. I'm gonna rate you hard on this one. So, <laughs> so, so. I know where this is Okay. Dan Orlowski posted the other day, yesterday. Uh, on, I saw your, that. He yep. said Colony Grill was number one. I, I don't know. I don't know about all that. <laughs> so, so what's your what's your favorite pizza in Connecticut, or or is New Jersey pizza better than Connecticut? Because we might have another hour conversation if you need to say that. <laughs> all right. So this is a. I'm going to give you a complicated answer with a a miserable admission. Number one, I've never had colony. Really? That's fine. That's fine. Isn't that awful? Yeah, yeah. Is it fine? Yes, because it's not real pizza. It's not. It's not I like colony. It's not real it's pizza. Yeah. It's and not real pizza, though. I went to college here. How have I never had that? But, yeah, yeah it's just like, I got to be honest with you. I've never had it. I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm at DoorDash it right now. Can we do that? Yeah. Miller. It's on, you're, I mean, you're going on the wall. We're you're, going to the hockey game, right? Let's, yeah. let's eat it there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, Colony, I admit, I've never had it. But I would say the best pizza I've had in Connecticut is probably Sally's. All right, good. I would have to say that one. You just spoke uh, his language. Uh, <laughs> but the complicated answer ends here. Patsy's in Patterson, New Jersey Pats? is, is right. the best pizza ever. That That's Pats. the highest. I'm going to ask my really? boy. One of my boxers is from Patterson. So Really? Yeah. I'll have to ask him. So funny story about Patsy. So Dave actually went there and oh. did and did the review. He yeah. loved it. He gave it like I think like a nine. So wow. so yeah, it, 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 yeah. it hit the mark. Yeah. Um. But the video is so funny. You got to go on YouTube and find it. The the Patterson mayor actually showed up <laughs> and was like, "Oh, this is like so cool. You're here. This is yeah. great." And like he wouldn't let Dave go. It was like he was like trying to like kidnap him. Like, like come take a ride with me. I'll I'll show you here. I'll bring you to this place. And, it was very funny. Yeah, really? so yeah, look up the Patsy's okay, Patsy. Patterson review. All right, I got um, But yeah, that one's my favorite by far. Oh, we I'm, actually ordered it like two weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Have you ever been to uh, Raza in Jersey City? No, I haven't. Definitely check it out. It's a okay. phenomenal pizza place. I love it. Sorry, Paul. It no. beats Connecticut pizza. And I'm no. not even from New Jersey. This is a Florida man talking. All right? I will talk. say this too. I haven't, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't had Sally's in... A, a decade, I would say. So, for, right. for what it's worth, I could be no, it forgetting is, I, I how think amazing it, per, it is. No, I think it's. I think it's number one. Um, I think another, like Modern's really good. Uh, I think Pepe's went down a little bit just because they're franchising yeah, too yeah, much. Uh, up there, yeah. yeah, things are going. Yeah. I think. Uh, and then Zoo Parties. Uh, it's in West Haven. Uh, Dave went there too. That was actually the street I grew up on. So it's okay. pretty pretty cool. He rated that one really high too. Um, so that's why he was like all the all these havens. They're like, what's yeah. going on down here? Um, so yeah, no, you passed, you passed the test. Yeah. About, yeah. He, he loves Connecticut pizza. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. yeah, it's, uh, no, it was, good. It was, yeah, that he was... crowned it number one. I go off, you guys see my Twitter. I go off on these people when they talk about, cause yeah. they always talk about New York, you know, and now, uh, you know, Connecticut pizza is number one. Unfortunately, we we're out of time. We'd love out. to have you. Yeah, yeah. They were connecting up. They found listen. out I never had called me. <laughs> Get this guy out of here. It's time, time to wrap this up. Listen, yeah. this was uh, you know this is not a million dollars worth of game, but you gave a million dollars worth of game to the to our listeners. So thank you very much thank for stopping you, by. I appreciate we appreciate it. your thank time. You. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thanks. This has been another episode of What You Doing. Oh.